thank you for tuning into Astro Awani and you are watching Silhouette. This is Silhouette's final episode for this season from Signature at the Roof, First Avenue, Banda Utama, where integrated gastronomy and entertainment hub come together. And we dedicate this week's lineup to our men. The North Face, founded in 1968, is the world's premier supplier of authentic, innovative and technically advanced outdoor apparel, equipment and footwear. Demonstrating its commitment towards fueling passion for the outdoors, the North Face sponsors professional athletes from the world of extreme sports and adventures. And we got lucky enough to have the chance of getting close and personal with Ryan S. Blair, one of the world's famous adventure racing medalists, who is also the North Face USA-sponsored athlete. My background in terms of uh, adventure sport is uh, adventure racing. And adventure racing is a sport that involves mountain bike, kayak, trail run, and then usually some kind of a ropes activity. Um, it can be one day, it can be up to you know, seven days. But essentially it's anything non-motorized to get you from point A to point B. Eight years ago, I developed the first regional athlete team um, for adventure sport in Asia. And our, sorry, the concept was uh, a team that would focus on trail running events, mountain bike events, and then adventure racing. So I approached North Face with, the, with this concept eight years ago. And at the time, they were involved already in sponsoring some races in China and other locations in Asia. And uh, I've been working with the global office since, um, based out of Hong Kong. Um, for you know, for the last eight years, and they just they've been a they they, they love the idea, and um, been a, a big supporter of the team. Um, so it's really a a relationship that's evolved quite well. We've expanded the team now. There's nine of us. I think what what's great about the outdoors is is to be able to combine it with travel, and so you know being able to go to a new place and and just not only discover the outdoors, but what cultures are living in these wilderness areas. Because there's, you know, in a lot of parts of the world, especially like in the Himalayas, let's say, in very, very high mountains, you have cultures and people living like this, so remote and high up in the, that, you, that you would ever imagine. And you never can get bored of, um, you know, what na how nature can surprise you. There's so many places like this that are so much more accessible than I think we, we realize. I mean, even in your own backyard here in KL, with Bukit Kiera, is, I mean, hopefully, I just hope the Malaysian government will find a way to protect that. I know there's a lot of development now, and but that is, I mean, there's great jungle trails that is like 10 minutes from where we're standing. You know, beautiful, like serious nature. Um, so it's having places like that that are quick to access is is great for people that live in the city. But I just one thing that I want to just stress is how lucky Malaysians are. You you really here are blessed. I mean you, it's like two countries as well. You know, okay, East Malaysia is is just a whole other ball game in terms of Sarawak and Sabah. I mean it's a vast area, bigger than West Malaysia, and such a variety over there. Um, and having like Kinabalu, you know, there, and so many other um, spectacular outdoors. And then in West Malaysia, of course, build, you know, Perak State, um, many other locations, like a lot of variety, a lot to, so you don't have to go very far for Malaysians. You're very, very lucky. There's like, you're blessed with a lot of outdoor jewels, yeah. Swiss Auction is a new activity of DKSH business segment Luxury and Lifestyle, which is a specialized platform in auctioneering of rare timepieces. For the first time after its debut in 2011 in Hong Kong, the Swiss Auctions made its way to Kuala Lumpur, making our capital city the host for the third Swiss Auctions. This is a proof that Kuala Lumpur is indeed facing a dynamic growth, that KL is fast becoming a stronghold of demand for luxury goods and lifestyle among affluent Asian cities. DKSH, we have been doing watches for more than 150 years. So we have been distributing a lot of big brands across the region. 
and uh, we can see that the chain, the trend is changing. Because in the past, people buy watches for their use, day to day use. But now, people buy watches for investment. But at the same time, they also buy watches to suit their different occasions. They may be one watch for dinner, one watch for working, one watch for wash, and one even as a form of treasure. So the, the, the way people collect watches is also different. The number of watch collectors coming into the market more than the number of watch brands that is coming to the market. You know, we can see that the whole world is collecting watches now. Especially for mainland Chinese, they have become the world number one collector. In the past, we have the Japanese and the Italian who are collecting watches, and the Hong Kong people are collecting watches. And we can see that with the rising middle class in Malaysia, there are more and more people are coming into the hobby of collecting watches. So competition there is, but the market is also growing. We have uh, like range from 800 for uh, Omega Speedmaster, US 800 to you know two thousand dollars long jeans, or even to to ten thousand uh, dollars Rolex. So we have a range of price for everybody. The top ten is because number one is the quantity they produce is very limited. For the Patek Moonface, for example, it was only produced in very limited quantity. Even during the time when it was launched, to find one is really not easy. You have to have a connection with the trade in the, in order to find these watches. And the watches that we have is in very, very good condition. The other second piece that we found is a vintage 1970s Rolex diving watch. So most divers' watch is in, printed in white, but this is a special one where they, the words are printed, two rows of the words are printed in red, making it very, very collectible. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back with news. He is the guru of proper dressing, etiquette and grooming with a vision to make the nation a well-dressed society. He is Bonsai now. It's in the blood. Uh, my grandmother is a tailor way back during uh, kebaya, jet kebaya, I mean uh, sewing kebaya by hand, you know, the embroidery, you know, which is it's none here, we don't see none here. But I think it starts from there. Lah. My, uh, uh, um, uh, my forte is more to fashion marketing, not fashion design. Fashion design, you just, you're, you're, you're confined to design only. Fashion marketing is more, you learn, you learn about designing, pattern making, administration, marketing, PR, and uh, the whole works. That's what I'm measuring in. Good question there. I want to take that. I want to get that big break. But like this, um, I believe uh, uh, along the way, what, in, in, what you do, if you want to have it, I mean, this thing like you, 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 you can't plan. You know what I mean? As long as you know what you are doing, I mean, I mean, um, I mean, being noble about it, uh, I can fairly say, I mean, you can, you can break any time. You know, can break any time. But most of you have to know what the, the, the objective of it. They're coming from the intention of doing it. For me, simple. Um, being in Malaysian, I, I want to have Malaysian men to be in style. Why not? And then from there, you create the demand, you create the market, and everything. I think for the past five years now, five, I can say three to five years now, you see menswear, men fashion are coming in. You know, the Malaysian men are more daring, more bold. You know, so I think, hey, I think part of it. Thing, I, I mean, I'm, I'm glad to see, or maybe part of it is part of my intentions now there and then uh, it's good it's good it's a good feeling to have that i think to me that that's my break men's fashion uh, um, development here is uh, is good okay um things are coming there's a lot of gold they come in a lot of new uh, local designers coming in a lot, because a lot of colors but one thing you must remember like i always say you must know the basic the, the point the, the basic pointers of menswear you know, because menswear is is, is a bit, uh, um, they, they have they have rules basically. You know, I mean, menswear is not not more towards fashion. Your attitude, you know, your 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 way of life, you know, the the style that you portray. It's not just about putting something that you're putting the best brand whatever it is. It's not about that only. I mean, there is rule for it, but sometimes like I always say, you don't break the rule, you bend the rule. It's okay. 
you know but then again um, men they must understand the fundamental of men dressing but one thing about it men when they do it they are worse than women that one I know okay so so these are the things that um, uh, I don't say it's bad but we are getting to that now you know um, uh, the, the, the gentlemen in Malaysia they start to realize they start being um, um, well, uh, being uh, so called metrosexual and all that you know it's good you know because I think um, in terms of life women love well dressed men Hey, period. The five things. In, uh, um, number one, of course, let's let's talk basic jeans. I mean, a good jean, a proper jeans. Okay. Um, t-shirts, t-shirt, can be be white or black. A collar t-shirt or V-neck t-shirt. Um, a nice pair of sport shoe, not sneakers, sport shoes uh, or, or or walkabout shoes and all that. A nice pair of office shoes, uh, lace up your leather shoes. And, and a black suit, simple black suit, a simple black, a complete simple black suit, and a white shirt. Done. You're complete. If talking about born now, uh, before, and now, it's still the same. I mean, in terms of the, the brand, but yet in terms of product, it's more refined. You know, and then the product grows like wine. You know, it grows. Now it's more refined. So I think, I mean, the client now. I mean, most of my clients have been with me for the past 10, 15 years. Again, they started as a clerk. Before now, they are CEO. They are datuk. They are tansi. All that. So I grow with them. I always uh, have two inspiration. One uh, like, like, like uh, designers. To me, Tom Ford is like he's the one. He's the man basically. Okay, but for uh, for businesses, my so called my. Um, Leadership studies is uh, Richard Branson. This, this, this two icon. You know, I, I, I like, I like to, I like the way they do things. Being involved in the fashion association and, and, and so on. Uh, sometimes I may, I may be too loud sometimes, but again, it's for the industry. You know, in fact, we, recently we have debate with the, even the government official. I mean, time to hey, come on, guys, come on, let's look into this, this, this area uh, on this fashion, fashion industry because. What we wear every day. This is this, this is what we see. You know the jacket, even the blouse, the and This is what we see, and mainly from local. You know, and then um, surprisingly, most uh, international brand way back, even even some now, are produced here. I remember last time when I was in LA working after, on job training. Eh, on training, I was working in uh, Polo Ralph Lauren boutique in Beverly Hills. My job that time, uh, uh, um, uh, they put me as a stock person, which is worse than salesman. My job is after salesman done their work, my job is to put things together, uh, to fold back all the baju and all that, fold back, put in, put back in the box, you know. And then one of the t-shirt was like, hey, nice t-shirt, but made in Malaysia. It cost 385 US in 1985. Remember that? So you know, I mean, so these are the things that we should look into. Fashion, like, like say this. You want to have fun? You have to have fun. Fashion is fun, you know, so, we, so we, have, we should look into this. It's more, uh, uh, um, you have to be more enterprising, more, uh, uh, you have to instill an entrepreneurship uh, uh, mindset in each and every designer. Then you can go. More macho lineup on Stycopedia, but before that, a short break. Encyclopedia is all about the big boy toys, the intricacy of fine Swiss watch, handmade shoes, and getting tacky. Matri du Tom translates as Masters of Time is a Swiss watch company founded in 2005 by Stephen Holtzman. Launched in 2008 in the midst of a worldwide economic crisis, the company's philosophy is a passion for design. Matri du Tom watches are designed by a rotating group of watch-making masters and it has now made a home in our country in Star Hill Gallery. The, the project started as a, an ambition, a, 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 bringing a new philosophy to, to a watch brand. Uh, bringing a new watch brand on the market is always difficult. So the idea was to, to, to blend together uh, several uh, uh, know-how, several watchmakers that will work together on the on the same project and developing a new movement. 
Uh, one of the particular elements of Metro Bitton are the roller bars, meaning we use rollers to indicate uh, uh, days or months or moon phase. And uh, this is something which is not used in the industry. So all the watchmakers had to face the challenge how to incorporate those bars into the main movement. And that has two consequences. <clears throat> you have to redimension the movement, so it's completely a new, a new approach. And the design, and you can see it through the products, <clears throat> the design is extremely specific because we have to enlarge the case to actually uh, uh, welcome those uh, rollers. So that was the idea in 2005. It took three years to develop the first movement. And in 2008, we presented in Geneva the chapter one, which was the first result, the first collaboration between the different master watchmakers. So obviously when you go very deep into the mechanical elements, uh, you are uh, more targeting a kind of uh, connoisseur or collector market. And, and this is uh, extremely important for the awareness at the beginning and the credibility to have established the brand as a very high-end brand in the watchmaking. We have really the top level, state-of-the-art finishing, uh, the components, if I take the chapter one, is 554 components. They're all hand finished, they all combined together obviously by hand and casing is extremely complex process. So we have established the brand as really one of the reference in the industry. And this had to be done through the, the collector network. So we have reached after five years this awareness among this uh, collector market. And we came along the way with some other products, chapter two and then chapter three, which are more, I would say, uh, open to a wider public. What started as a mission to looking for good shoes in Thailand ended up to giving birth to a shoe label from two young entrepreneurs. Mango Mojito depicts the design of Asian culture with the strength of Italian craftsmanship. Everyone knows that Italy read the shoes industry, right? Because when you think about the shoe, that, yeah, the Italy has become number one in the world. So we, we use the same um, material and use the same finishing style of the Italy. That's why we can call we are using the same technique of Italian touch in our Italian touch collection. You can see that the, the later have two tone here, right? We use every technique, like in this in this shoe we have like four or five techniques to make this color. We have to do hand finishing, dyeing, and a lot, and also the, the rope, we also dyeing it. So it used a lot of time and used a lot of cost to doing it. When we launched the first collection, no one knows, no one knows who we are. What is Mango Mojito? Is it cocktail or is it, is it like, yeah, something like drinks? No, we, we are not, we are, we are doing shoes. And we use the marketing, we, 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 we do not um, put on a lot of money on marketing. We, we use the word of mouth of marketing. People, when, when they like our product, they will share their um, information via Facebook or via social network or in anything. And then when it becomes famous, 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 the friend, um, the friend of the owner, the, the one that bought from us, yeah, they will come back to us and buy and repeat it, and repeat it again. I think that branding is the most challenging for me. Right now we have like, I'm, sh I'm, I'm kind of um, sure that we have a fan know my, my brand in Thailand is more than like 100,000 people. The wide spectrum and influences in our country allow us to celebrate the things that make us unique, like our fashion, music and food. Realising the importance of rejoicing the passion and the points of what makes Malaysia and its people unique, Samsung Malaysia took a bold step by appointing the likes of Alia Bastamam, Jo Chia and even Jo Plizo as their ambassadors.
and staying true to that spirit of uniqueness, here's a smart and slick device that combines PC productivity with tablet mobility made for that unique individual who craves creativity and excellence in everything. The Samsung Active Tab 3 is designed with great mobility through its slim 8.2mm frame and lightweight 543 gram body, making it an ideal companion device for travel, especially that mobility you need from work to home and vice versa. Like the fast-paced cosmopolitan lifestyle, the improved S Pen functionality and a detachable Bluetooth keyboard, this seamless tablet allows the freedom to explore creativity and heighten productivity. With a 10-hour battery life, the Samsung Active Tab 3 exudes the fast-free and worry-free lifestyle for it is capable of handling demanding notebook requirements without having to constantly charging the device. And of course, there's more to what this tablet can offer. In a nutshell, the Samsung Active Tab 3 is all about versatility and convenience. Perfect for every ambitious big boys and girls in the city who always aim to hit the game and life of productivity, mobility in whatever they do. And that's all the time we have for you for this week brought to you from The Roof. It's been an amazing more than just fashion journey for us here in Astro Awani. I'm Dahlia Shazwan and on behalf of our fabulous fashion team, signing off for Silhouette this season. Till we meet again, see ya!